I'm Paul, the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to look at the process of laser etching a photo into a piece of glass. Now that sounds a lot more simple than it is, but it's really all about file prep when it comes to laser etching. So a good portion of this video is going to be me processing the photo in Photoshop and then taking it into Lightburn to prepare some kind of tests. But before I crack on with the video, if you're a fan of Victorian techniques, gold leaf, reverse painting, sign painting, digital techniques, then you're in the right place because that's all this channel's about and I usually release one video a week. So if that's your cup of tea, then please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I've put a link to my Patreon in the description. Uh, I've also put a link to the Happy Gilder Facebook group, my Instagram and my Etsy shop. So just one more thing before I crack on with the video, I just want to say a massive thank you to Mark Presling. Mark runs one of my favourite YouTube channels where he always makes all sorts of stuff, like from Nixie clocks to garden lamps to bridges. Really talented guy. I can't recommend his channel enough, so I'm going to put a link to that in the description. But Mark gave me a shout out in his last video, and my subscriber count went from averaging around 10 subscribers a day to, I think overnight, I got 200 subscribers um, after Mark had mentioned me in his video. So thank you so much, mate. So that out of the way, let's crack on with the vid. Right, so I'm starting this process in Photoshop, and for once I'm actually going to use Photoshop for what it was designed for, and that is editing photos. So as always, I start with a blank screen, and I'm just going to get up the tabs that I need, so I haven't got a really busy workspace. So first thing I'm going to need, go up to Window and Layers, or you can press F7 to show those. Let's just shrink that down a bit, and I'm also going to need my channels. So the photo is pretty good, it's sharp, where it needs to be sharp, it's got nice contrast to it, but that's not quite ready for being etched onto a bit of glass. Got to do a few things to make sure I get the best results. So firstly, when this is etched on glass, we need to kind of convert it to black and white. So if I just desaturated this image, I can do that by going to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate, or Control shift u And when I've converted that to black and white, doesn't look as nice. You know, there's a really kind of blinging bit on this white collar. My face has gone pretty grey and dull. And there's actually not a lot of contrast in the background here. So direct conversions from colour to black and white aren't as simple as just turning the colours off, really. So I've just pressed Control z to undo that. And what I want to do is look through my channels to see the best result that I'm going to get from, for a black and white conversion. So if I click on the red channel, that's never going to be the best channel to use when there's skin tones involved. So the way this is kind of working is everything that's white and then there's a gradient down is letting red through in this channel. And obviously because there's a lot of red in skin, they're quite peaked out in the red channel. The green is better. There's a bit more contrast in there and I think we'll do something with it. And blue generally looks awful for skin. So I'm looking at using the green channel but not in its current form. I want to kind of edit that and get the best out of that. And the way I'll do that is go to Image, Calculations. And what I've got, because the green channel is selected, it's calculating the green with the green with a blend mode of overlay, and it looks really nice. So I think by default you'll have that set to Multiply, which will just double the channel values, which in this case doesn't work. But Overlay looks really nice. If there's anything that looks too peaked out, um, you can always lower the opacity of, of this calculation. And if you hold shift and use your arrows up and down, you can kind of bring a bit of that back. And I think something like that looks, looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new document out of that. So I'll go to New Document, OK. Now, this will be set to a multi-channel mode, which is no good for editing. So if I just go to Image, Mode, Grayscale. And you can look at the kind of differences between these two here. If I just click back on the RGB and I'm going to desaturate this, as I've done before. So let's go to Image Adjustments and Desaturate. What I want to do is kind of look at the difference between these two to show you know how, how much better it is using the calculation method. So we we'll go to Window, Arrange, Tile, Horizontally. Then I've got the, the view of these so I can and so, so I can see the comparison. 
And if, if I want to zoom into these together, if you want to zoom in on, on, a, on a single part of any image, you would hold Control and Spacebar and then click. But if I hold Control, Shift and Spacebar, that will zoom in on, on both images or in any images that are on the screen. The same if I want to pan around an image, I hold the spacebar down and then as I click and drag that will pan around. If I hold shift and spacebar that allows me to pan around whatever's open on the screen. So I can just pan around this image and check that I'm happy with it compared to the original image. And I am, I think it looks a lot better. So with that I'm just going to close the original down take that out of tab because I hate working in tabs so it's looking okay so far but at the moment it's a bit too heavy in terms of contrast and I know if this was a print I would leave it as it is you know contrast in black and white photos looks brilliant but it doesn't work so well when it's laser etched because the way you got to think of this is anything that's jet black isn't going to be etched at all that's just going to be clear glass and you want as much kind of detail running throughout it because it'll just look a lot nicer when it's lasered. So what I'm going to do now is, is something that will bring out some of that shadow detail. So firstly what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer. You can do that by right clicking and duplicate layer or you can drag it into the drag the layer into this bottom bit here. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my blend mode to screen. Now this obviously looks hideous because what screen does as a blend mode is it doubles the brightness of everything. It's sort of like the opposite of multiply which will kind of double the values. This is kind of doubling the brightness. And I only want to do that in the, in the kind of darker areas. So going back to the concept of channels and, and letting light through in, in the white areas, what I can do is use that to my advantage. So if I hover over this gray channel, but if I hold the control key, you can see the little marching ant symbol running around it. So if I click on that, what that's done is loaded a selection of everything that's peak white up to a mid gray and it's done that in a gradient so peak white that will be 100% selected and then as it sort of gradually goes up to mid gray the opacity of that selection will fade and I want to use that to mask off the areas um, that I don't want to apply this uh, screen blend mode to so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to inverse that selection that basically means do a, a reverse of it so at the moment I've got the white selected but I want the dark selected so I'm going to select inverse and then now all I'm going to do is click on this little tab here which is a layer mask and that's masked off all of the white areas so that it hasn't applied the screen blend mode to it but it's kept it in the dark areas it's not perfect yet but we can make a few modifications to that so the first of those modifications is if I double click on this layer just to bring up my layer styles which if you watch my other videos you'll be familiar with these from the kind of things we use on text but what I'm looking at here is is this part which is called blend if now as you can see you've got this layer and the underlying layer and what these are the shadows and the highlights and if I just grab this slider here and pull this down you can see what that's doing it's pulling the highlights out of this layer and it looks horrible so let's look up here at what that's actually doing as I sort of slide that around you can see it's taking the highlights out but in, in a very crude way. What I want to do is do that in a, in a very subtle way. And the way to do that is to split this. And, the, and what you do, you hold the Alt key and then click on it. I don't know if you can see but that's left a, a bit of a thicker line through here. And then I can grab this side of this and pull it right down to the bottom. And I'm just going to go OK. Put that on screen and that looks a lot better it means we've got the highlights um, preserved we've got the darker areas kind of boosted a little bit but nothing you know destructive and also the, the sort of gradient where we've where I've blended it in the layer styles just is, is much smoother so turning that on and off that's what this looks like so looking good so far what I'm going to just do is hold control select or shift select and then press control and E or you can go to Merge Visible, which is there. So now we've just got a flattened layer with all of the effects applied, but I can't go back in and edit them anymore, so I've committed to that. What I'm going to do now is just check my tonal values, because I'm really happy with this, but it does look a little bit washed out. 
So if I just press Control and L, or you can go to Image, Adjustments and Levels, this is telling me that the black starts here. Um, so I'm just going to bring this slider ever so slightly up to about there, where you can see a tiny bit of black. And it means we've got a kind of nicely balanced image now. Now there's just one more thing what I need to do, which is only something again that I do with the laser because it will sort of ruin the photograph and it will look terrible as an actual photograph. But it will make a big difference when it's lasered onto a bit of glass. And that is to sharpen it. Now if I zoom in on here, let's go to some of these top details. I mean, it is a sharp image. You know, you can see the kind of skin tones, but the laser isn't as accurate as a printer. You know, it, it will, it's fracturing glass. So you've got to expect that these finer details are going to get lost as that glass is fractured. So what I want to do is over sharpen this so that it kind of almost mimics what we're looking at here, but it's overdone on the laser. And the way I'll do that is I just duplicate this layer. I'm going to invert it. So it's control I and that sort of makes it a negative of itself. So let me just put that on screen. So that's the negative version. And then I'm going to set the blend mode to vivid light. Now what this has done is all in all but a few areas it's given us that perfect mid grey which whenever you apply a blend mode to a mid grey um, it's not going to do anything. It's all of the other tonal values either side of that that will impact your image. So with it set to vivid light and mid grey now what I want to do is just go to filter blur and surface blur and what we've got here because I've inverted this image it's kind of working as a reverse blur and actually sharpening it. Now, a lot of people would say to do this through the high pass filter, but I would never use the high pass filter because you haven't got this extra level of control and you'll get much more sort of haloing when you're sharpening an image. So the radius is basically, you know, how wide you're going to go in that sharpening and then the threshold is how strong it is. So if I push the radius of this up, you can see what that's doing to the sort of skin, making it sort of blotchy. So it's not sharpening it as, uh, as I'd like to. And it almost gives it that weird HDR look where you'll get haloing and stuff like this. So I like to always keep the radius low and then kind of play about with the threshold. So let's just have a look. But I think what we had around somewhere around between 70 and 80 or something like that. Looks good. Well, it doesn't look good, but it will work for what we need it for. So I'm just going to click OK. Now the only other thing I need to do, what I'd ordinarily do, is set this to a blend mode of overlay. But that's not going to work because it's already got a blend mode and this blend mode is giving it the look that I want. So I need to kind of convert this and its look into an image. The way to do that is to kind of make a stamp of what's visible on screen. And I'll do that by just pressing Shift, Control, Alternate and E. Now you won't have seen anything happen on here, but what that's done is created a layer that if I just isolate that layer, that's what that looks like. Whereas if I turn that off, this is what this looks like without anything behind it. So I don't need this anymore. The one that's set to vivid light can go in the bin, and then the one that I've just made, I'm just going to set to overlay. And you can see that is just hideously sharp and not very nice at all. But as I said, this, this will make a difference in lasering. So this is what we've got now. This is what it was before. So fit that on screen. Shift select or control select and then just press control and E to combine. And I've just got two more steps to do. And this is really important. Firstly, the laser works like a printer. You know, and if you imagine a printer printing this image, it would be printing black ink and then fading it down to printing nothing in the white areas. That's exactly what a laser is going to do. But the difference is, when the laser etches that surface, it's not going to etch black, it's going to etch white. So we need to invert this image, pressing Control and I. And then now, anything that's black in this image will be etched by the laser and hence come out white on the glass. I hope that makes sense. I think it will when I demo it on the actual laser. The only other thing, which you can do in the laser software, but I'll show you how to do it in here, is because I'm going to be doing this on the back of the glass, I need to flip it so that it's mirrored. So I can go to Image, Image Rotation, Flip Canvas, Horizontal, and that's it.
all I'm going to do now is save that as a JPEG and, and then drag it into the laser software. Right, so I'm now in a bit of software called Lightburn and this is the software that I use to run the laser. You can get a similar bit of software for free that's called RD Works. I chose to go with Lightburn because it helps figure out some of the mathematical things when it comes to using a rotary axis, but I think other than that, that they're pretty similar. So what I've done is just done a crop of the image that I want to be etching onto the glass. And that's because I want to kind of run some tests to see what the best settings are going to be for the laser. Now, if you get light burn, anything in here, what you can do is click on it. And then once you've figured out the best setting, you can rename it, put all of those settings in here, save it, and then that's in there forever. Now, I've just changed my laser tube to a different brand, so I can't trust my settings for etching photos into glass. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to find out the best settings. So the first thing I'll do is just figure out a setting that I want to start with. And what I have in here is the speed that it's going to be running backwards and forwards, the maximum power and the minimum power. Now the guy who set up my laser said that anything below 10 on minimum power isn't going to even do anything. So there's no point going below 10. Maximum power, I don't want to go too high because if, if you go too high when you're etching glass, the fracture can almost sort of come away and, and rub off it, you know, and we want to kind of just be gently etching the surface of the glass. The speed, I'm going to be going somewhere, you know, I think 200 millisec is probably going to be about right, but, you know, it might go up to 300. Really, anything below 100, or not, not maybe not below 100, but the sort of lower numbers are really more for cutting shapes rather than etching surfaces. If you go too low when you're etching wood, it will catch fire. Um, and too low on glass, which I've done before, and it just sort of fractures it and, and isn't very nice at all. So for a first setting on this one, I'll stick at 200 and I'll stick with what settings are in here. Um, I haven't tested these before, but we'll go max power 50, minimum power 30, 300 DPI, which is what the image is, and that's okay. So I'm gonna go with that. And then what I'll do, using my type tool, just click that here. I'm going to go 200, 50, 30. Just click on that. Oop, just get my move tool. Move that above this. And at the moment, this is set to fill, which is what I want. But it could, it's very likely when, when you use your type tool, it'll be set to line. And that's because, let me just zoom in. You just use the mouse wheel to scroll in. That's because the text is a vector. So it's, it, will automatically think that you want to cut it rather than kind of fill it. So I'm going to go to, let's just have a look at the settings in here. I'm just going to change these. I mean, it's not going to affect this because this is the C17 setting for an image. And I'm just going to change the C17 setting to a fill to something similar. So let's just go 200, 50, 30. This doesn't matter because I'm not, I'm not trying to test anything out here. This is just to kind of let me know what I've actually what setting I've used when I'm looking back at the glass. Oh, the only other thing, because this is going to be on the back of the glass, while this is selected, I'm just going to click this up here. And that means that's just reversed my text. So I've got a layer here that's set. Now I want to kind of do a different layer that's got different settings. So if I press Control C, Control V, let's move that here. Now I've got C17, but I know I've got some more blank ones set. So if I just click that, C18, 240, 20, 300 DPI. So that's a max and min power minus 10% from the last setting. So I'll go with that. And I will just copy and paste this and then, then re-edit the text. So copy and paste, move that to here. 40 and 20 and that's still on that same C17 setting for the fill so that's fine I'm, I'm not fussed about that and let's just go again doing a similar thing and then just kind of dropping down on, on the settings as we go so I want that what have I got 17 18 so let's see what 19's got So 20, 10, these are already set because I'd kind of ran through this before, but I think this is a good way of doing it, you know, going down in 10% on the minimum and maximum to start with. So I'm going to go with that. And I think what I'm going to do is just double this up 
but I'm going to keep the power settings the same and then change the speed. So it's just control, copy and paste all of those. That's still selected C17 from that copied one. So if I go to C20, 300, 50, 30, 300 DPI, OK. And then I'm just going to repeat that going along, but I won't make you watch that. So I'll just stop the video here and then start the laser etching when these are ready. It's hot today. Right, so I'm ready to do my test piece. So I'm just going to show you how I've got it set up in the laser. So this is my piece of glass. And you notice what I've got here is vinyl application tape. And the reason I use that is because you just get a much sharper etch when, when you're etching a photo onto glass. Don't know the science behind it. I assume it's due to this kind of sticky layer holding the sort of glass when it's being fractured that maybe stops it spreading that little bit but it really does help so i've got this set up as it needs to be the laser tip needs to be eight mil from the surface of the glass and the way i measure that is i've got something that, that is cut to exactly eight mil so i'm just going to turn this on now um, excuse the hum it does make a bit of a noise so, And I want to get that into position. So I've got these little arrows here, which will allow me to move that. So I don't know how big all of these are, so I'm just going to click frame just to see. And that looks good. So, just going to click start. Um, I'll film it with the lid open and then get out the shed because I'm not supposed to do that. But I'll take the safety down and put it on time lapse so you can see the the kind of design being etched into the glass. All right. Okay, so I'm hoping that this uh, is, is as visible in the camera as it is to the naked eye, but these are our results. And from where I'm looking, 200, 40 and 20 is the best. It's got the most amount of detail kept in where there's shaded areas like the nose. On this one, it's blown out a lot of those kind of gradual shadows or, or whatever. On this is sort of blown out that sort of detail on the nose. Um, we've got a little bit more contrasty detail up there. And I just think overall it's more even. The hat looks nicer. There's this too blown out over there where it's etched too deep. There's not a huge amount of difference between this one and this one. But I just think you're still losing some of that nice sort of gradient detail that you're getting in this top one. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, the 200, 40 and 20. So everything's set, ready to etch the photo into this piece of glass. Now you'll notice my application tape doesn't go right up to the edge. And there's a reason for that. I don't want to etch this so that it comes over the edges. And the reason for that is in the past, I've had a few bits of glass crack. And I think it's where the laser sort of comes in and touches the edge, because obviously glass is much more fragile on the edge. And I'd get like a long way through it. And then you'd kind of get a split that goes up where the laser's just sort of tapped in at the side of it, almost like something hitting it. So I'm going to sort of just scale my piece so that it's just within the barriers of the glass. So I'm going to do that now, put it on time lapse again while it etches the piece just so you can see it and then get it in a frame, light the edges and then just see how it looks.
So this is the kind of finished piece and what I've done, I've framed it and then just put a bit of black vinyl behind it that you can see when I get right close in, the detail that's managed to pick up but it's still nowhere near as over sharpened as the actual original image. It kind of, well not the original image, the image that we edited to etch onto the glass, it's a bit more like the actual original image. Um, you know, even getting nice detail in the kind of suede of, of the tracksuit. But what I've also done is run some LED lights around the inside of the frame. And I've covered this in another video, which is called How to Make a Light Up Mirror. So I'm going to put a, a link to that up here. But what you can kind of do then is, you know, light this up. I mean, that's a bit overkill, but you know, if you sort of tone that down, it could look quite nice at night. And I mean, I mean who wouldn't want that up in their house, eh? So that's that. Bit of a long one and I hope you weren't too bored with all of the kind of technical processes. Um, but I do hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.